What's up YouTube? This is Kyle with Carve Creative. Today I'm going to be talking about the One Wheel GT. Um, now I'm going to be giving a little bit of a different perspective than what some of you have seen so far. The main thing is I'm a big rider. I weigh 265 pounds. I feel like a lot of the reviews so far have been from people between 160 to 180 pounds. So I think I have a little bit of a different perspective to offer and hopefully I can inform some of you people that have been wondering if this thing is gonna be good for you. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the torque. Uh, this board, the second you step on it, the torque is very noticeable. It was like, I'm so used to engaging on the XR and right when you engage, it's kind of mushy. It kind of goes down and then comes back up again. Uh, this board in Highline is what I've been riding in the most. The second you engage it, you just go and you feel that instant acceleration right away. Uh, so the torque is definitely for me, it's, it's a game changer in many ways. Uh, it's a game changer for going from low speed to high speed. It's a complete game changer for going up hills. Uh, I feel like I've never been able to comfortably go up hills and anytime I do, especially if it's a very drastic hill, I have to ride kind of switchback style where I'm carving back and forth just to stay upright. And when I would do that, I would even feel surging quite a bit. So for me, the ability to go up those hills with confidence is amazing. Um, I'm not gonna lie, last summer, I bought a EUC and the main reason I bought the EUC was because I was feeling like the XR was underpowered for me. And uh, I would go on group rides with my friends and I would get frustrated because there was a lot of areas where I was carrying my XR up the hill because I couldn't keep up with them. So the next thing I want to talk about is these foot pads. These concave foot pads are really nice and the grip tape is really nice. I know that some people have complained that the edges of the foot pads are kind of sharp and they'll hurt their feet. And I feel like that's mainly trick riders that are talking like that because maybe they're doing bigger drops and you're, you know, you have your foot like slamming against these kind of harsh corners. Um, for me, I haven't had that problem at all. And it also could be the shoes. I ride Nike SBs and they have a pretty thick sole on the bottom. And I feel like maybe that helps cushion the blow a little bit but for me so far these foot pads have been amazing I've had zero issues with them engaging I've actually noticed that they're a lot more responsive like my son Lincoln he's six years old and he loves riding a one wheel but he can't just get on the stock foot pad and go I actually have to cut small strips of grip tape and put them on each side each zone of the foot pad and this is the first board where he was able to step on this thing and it engaged for him, so he was pretty excited about that. Another thing I want to talk about is the stability of this board. I don't know if it's the weight, if it's the software, but this board feels a lot more stable than what I'm used to. Um, it's just, it feels really solid underneath your feet. Whether you're carving, whether you're going up hills, whatever you're doing, it feels stable. And I know there's a lot more torque. There's a lot more holding you upright than there ever has been. I really love the stability. I also want to talk about speed. So on the XR, the highest speed that I ever got was 18.7. And it was going downhill and I nosedived. So with my XR, I was always kind of skeptical for going fast. I like had that one experience and I was like, I'm not doing that again. So like after that, the fastest I would go was like 17, 17 and a half. Um, this board is so different for that. When you're in high line, you can go 19, 19.2, and then you start hitting pushback. And it's just crazy to me because you can actually comfortably ride fast now. And I've never had that feeling before on a one wheel. Um, especially, you know, I have a pint X as well. And that one, the pushback for me starts around 16. They say you can get 18. But if you're a bigger rider, you're getting pushback at 16 and it's pretty drastic. On this one, you do get drastic pushback as well, but it's happening a lot later and you feel a lot more comfortable with what you have. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the range with this thing. So the first day I got it, I charged it up to 100% and I took it out in my neighborhood. I put on four miles and the battery was down to 80%. So that was pretty good, um, but I felt like it should have been a little bit better. Was a little bit disappointed. 
But one thing that I've found is every time that I charge this thing back up to 100%, it seems to be balancing the cells out and they're getting to where they should be. Uh, I took it out yesterday and I put on 5.2 miles and was at 77%. So that's looking a lot better. Like at that rate, I should be getting around 20, 21 miles. You know, that's, that's pretty good. Uh, I was getting probably realistically around 11 or 12 on my XR. So for me, that's a win and I'll take that any, any day. The next thing I wanna talk about is the tire and the PSI that I've been running. So on my XR, I was running around 28 PSI, between 26 and 28 on the street, and then around 19 or 20 on the trails. The pavement PSI level was basically the 10% rule. 10% of your body weight is what you should be riding on pavement. Um, this tire is currently at 20, 20 and a half, and I have not touched it. Um, this is what it came stock from Future Motion. This is what they had it filled up to, and it feels really good. It actually, if anything, I, I could lose a little bit of air. Uh, when I take it out on the trails, I'll definitely be dropping it, probably to like 12 PSI. So for me, it's just so weird. I'm not used to riding street at 20, but it's such a hard tire that it really, you kind of have to. Um, as far as like the compound of this tire, it's a very stiff tire, but I feel like Future Motion had to do that because they want these things to last for quite a while. Um, it is stiff, but it's a really nice tire. It's got a great profile. It's perfect for carving. I'd say it's like perfectly in the middle between the XR, the Vega, and the Unili that was on the Pint. And I really enjoy it. I'd be very interested to see what the slick feels like because I have the treaded option. But I can't wait for the snow to melt and for the mud to dry out so I can actually ride this thing on some trails. But I'm very impressed with the tire for it being a stock tire. Lastly, I think that the best thing about this board for me is the ability to keep up with my friends. Um, <laughs> we went on a group ride a few days ago. There was about 12 of us. We had a blast. And typically on group rides, I would be towards the back of the ride because I'm an XR, I'm the biggest one out there and I can never keep up because I'm surging the whole time. It was amazing for me this last Sunday. I literally, it was like I could do whatever I wanted to do finally. I could be in the back of the group, I could go shoot up to the front of the group, I could lead the group if I wanted to. Um, so for me that is a huge selling point, you know, like I'm so happy to be able to ride with my friends again. I'm looking to sell my EUC. I wanna get another one wheel. I wanna get the Slick GT. And um, I'm really happy with this board. Thank you, Future Motion. I think you knocked out of the park. Um, I really don't know what I would change or improve. I'm sure there's something that I'll find. I've put 60 miles on and they've been a great 60 miles so far. So I'm excited to put more miles on this thing and hopefully give you guys some sort of a trail review. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.